Next, we can create the additional components around the monitor by the same technique within Substance Designer. I will change the color of the background for now with a slightly lighter color than black because white background creates a contrast which I don't like when I see the model to add or remove any detail. So next I will create another graph within my same uh, Substance Designer file named dial pad to create a dial around uh, the screen uh, next to the screen so from the previous graph I will create a copy of the outer frame which I like because the shape of this uh, frame looks cool to be used in a dial pad. I'm switching back to the new graph. I uh, copied the notes by clicking uh, by hitting Ctrl and C keys from the keyboard. And next I passed them passed it them by the Ctrl V from the keyboard. So this is the same frame that we use on the monitor. So our next step will be creating a copy. We don't need to copy this. Let's start from over by connecting the nodes to output nodes manually. This is the height map. I'm adding an ambient occlusion node connected to the same output as ambient occlusion output. And for the normal, we have already a normal transformer node and I will connect the height result to this node to generate normal maps for our texture. Let's scale the main shape and also the inner shape to get a, a portrait look for the dimensions which looks better by this way and so we will now add additional height details to this dial pad to create a numeric input for the electronic device that we are going going to create because uh, this device will uh, work as a communication device and also a console that uh, people playing games and chatting together by some camera or additional details on the device so let's start with creating a gradient map for the panel inside the dial pad I want this panel inside this frame to be extracted uh, ang ang by an angle to hit uh, to input some uh, numeric values like a calculator or old school telephones for that I will just add a gradient linear node and for that I will use a curve to manipulate the shape of it next I will blend with the frame but for the frame I will for this blending I will use the inside part of this frame which is created as a shape and will be used as a mask for this blending when I put this my gradient only affect the inside part of this frame 
So from the curves, I will create a shape that I desired to be inside of this frame. Let's invert it first. Let's make the half of it at the back height level. I'm creating a perpendicular area at this part. Now we can change the level here. Which is better by this way so you can see the crease results around the shape best way to remove it to create a blurness on our blending mask I will use blue rescue grayscale node in a low intensity to get a smoother result here which is better this way. So we may need to narrow down more this dial pad because it still too, has too much width on general look of it. This is better. We may add uh, some tiny camera to here or side part and uh, we can add a little screen to the center. Let's, do, let's create the main shapes that we need for the screen. Also we can copy and paste the screen uh, shapes from the uh, other uh, graph that we created but since we will not use so much detail we can create from the scratch for this time so I'm adding a distance node to my shape to create a roundness and add a levels node to push down all the values but leaving a little area here to get a smoother result here because if I push it all the way down there will be some uh, sharp results here you can see the difference when I slide down the top level of this levels node Also, we can change the roundness a little bit more by increasing the max maximum distance and decreasing the scale of the shape. Oh, 
All right. Now, as usual, we will use two uh, gradient linear two nodes. One is rotated 90 degrees and we will blend them by multiplication to create the bumpiness of the screen again. And next we will blend these two by multiplying result borders with our shape. And so we have our bumpy screen now. Let's put it to our resulted shape. For the nice placement, we will do two transformation uh, simultaneously because uh, our screen is not in exact size for this shape and its position also in the center. So we will move it by a second transformation to the node. I will add them to my uh, resulted screen shape. One is for scaling and the second one is for placement. Now I will use a max lighten option to blend the screen with the rest of my shape. So let's start with scaling down this screen. I will use 90% downscaling and repeat it on height and width to place the screen better on the scale. So you can see that our tiling is uh, enabled for this new graph. I will click to an empty area on the canvas and from the tiling mode I will set it to absolute and then manually I will change it to no tiling. This way my uh, nodes will not be tiled when I scale, the, scale down them. So I will double click to this uh, resulted blending and single click on my shape to scale it to see the scaling of the shape. I'm continuing on downscaling 90% and now I have an uh, right width for my screen. Let's move the screen to top by the second transformation to the node. I will do the scaling here, positioning here. I will click on it and move it by holding shift key from the keyboard with an alignment. Now positioning is true. I will continue to scale down a little bit more to make the screen set on the dial pad. We may add some additional frame for this, so continue to scale down a little bit more, which is better now. And also, I will push it a little to the top. And now we are good to go. I will decrease the opacity of the blending to push down the top level of the screen for this blending. You can see that if I move down the slider of the opacity, screen goes up and down according to the height level of the background shape. Also, let's change our screen ratio on the height to get a more screen-like look for our screen. All right. We have our shape by this for the borders of the screen. So I will add an edge detect node and connect the shape and invert it. Now we have the uh, frame of our screen. As we do on the monitor, I will add a blur HQ node to blur down this uh, frame. And next, I will add a curve node to control the shape 
of this transition around the shape. Let's sharpen these points to get a nice shape for this frame. I don't know how this will look. Uh, we will change it after blending it. So these two transformation 2D nodes will be copied to get the exact placement of this frame over this shape too. I will add a blend node. Sorry, let's add a blend node by here. And then connect this frame to the previous shape by max blend option. Now we have our screen and the new frame, but the new frame is too intense on height. So I'm pushing down the values to get both screen and the frame in a nice blending. I will be adjusting the curve a little bit more by adding additional points to my curve graph. I will sharpen the seam of the blending with the rest of the dial pad shape. Now this is looking better than the previous. We can change the scale of our screen from the first shape to control both shapes like screen and the frame. Now we have screen placed on our dial pad. Now we will add, add the uh, button panel to the style pad. To do that, let's rename the uh, node groups that we created so far by the frames. Uh, this one is the keypad panel, and this is the screen and the frame. Let's move this aside. And now we can create a new shape. Then we will add a panel to this area to create our uh, buttons. Before that we can add increase the intensity of this blur to see a smoothed result for our keypad. Let me check. No, this is looking better. All right. Now I will decrease the shape of this back panel of the keypad. I will create a, another plating here and add keys to this area. So uh, let's check our model. We have this angular area and now we can create a 
aspect ratio for our panel to be placed here. It will be formed in an angular way. Uh, this will be some different uh, workflow than the than creating shapes on planar levels because we have already an angular uh, extrusion or angular displacement here but our shapes should be looked uh, linear to this angle but extrusion is made on horizontally or perpendicular to the plane normal as you know so we will uh, make our blending uh, modes according by considering this input i will add a distance node again to create a rounded corner for this shape i will do the uh, definitions by not considering the final result i will adjust them uh, later next just add a blend node here and subtract this shape from the our general model but we need to create a placement uh, for this panel let's add two transformation 2d nodes again and adjust the scale in 60 percent and now i will change it to subtract by the way now i will make the positioning first now i can change the scale of this shape a little bit more like this and also i will drop down the opacity you can see that subtraction and addition is relatively calculated results uh, when i subtract my shape from this shape subtraction made to the relative values white values of this shape so the angularity is protected by this way if i use max or min there will be absolute results if i make the uh, result because let me check let me show you if i use the max option our linear white values will be over overwrite the background values so subtraction makes with the low opacity protects the uh, angular result of the background let's scale the shape a little bit down right now we have a panel for our keys and also we can move the uh, keys to left side to create additional uh, buttons to this side like uh, start call and f uh, finish call buttons let's start with the keypad first to create the buttons i will start with creating a simple uh, square like shape let's scale down the shape a little bit and next i will use a distance node first to create a rounded result for this rectangular shape i will add levels and push down the values to white to get the mask of the shape and also we can adjust the uh, corner roundness by the distance maximum distance of this distance node 
and next I will add a bival node to make the uh, outer transition of this shape. This way our button will be have having a conical shape. Also we can adjust our uh, resulted shape by the first uh, by changing the x and y values differently at the first shape node like this and from the bevel I can decrease the distance of this transition around the button and finally we can add a fingertip roundness sent at the center of this uh, tip of the button to do that I will add another shape and change the shape pattern as hemisphere then I will add a blend node to subtract this this hemisphere from the resulted shape but to get this uh, subtraction only at the tip of this button I will use the previous uh, shape which uh, only masks the top part of this button as an opacity mask on our on my blend so subtraction will be affecting only the top side so I will subtract with the low opacity so the tip will be slightly rounded on the top part of this button we will see it better on the uh, height result on the 3d view let's move this output to this shape and check the result we can change the scale of this shape and also we can blur the opacity mask that we use for this subtraction let's increase it a little bit to see how it works all right now you see that we have a slightly rounded result of the, at the top part of the shape so our shape is uh, too much scale on the canvas uh, it's hard to see the nice uh, height transition along the plane but we can scale the height level from the by the material to see that better let's see it let's get to the material definitions and from the default I will click to edit and for for the scale I will set it to a high level to see the button roundness on the tip part now this is the uh, good looking height for my buttons but the roundness at the tip is uh, too intense so I will decrease the subtraction blending opacity at the tip to get a better looking result at the end all right now you see that this edges is too sharp so I will add a blue HQ gray scale with setting the quality to high with a minimum value to make it smoother this is way better now this is our single button shape I'm setting the height scale to 10 as the previous now I can blend these buttons with the rest of my dial pad shape at here 
For button blending, uh, I will use a transformation 2D node to scale the sim uh, single shape of this button. And then I will use a tile generator to set this button as 4x4. Four four. By changing the pattern to image input, I will be able to use the button shape as the tile shape. Let's delete this transformation 2D node and set the scale to increase the button shape. And from the bottom uh, blending mode of this tile generator, I will set it to max. If we have a uh, interception here, uh, it will be look better by setting it to max. If I uh, set to add and increase the button size too much on the intersection, there will be undesired result here because it will add the both white values to each other to get a high level of white at the end. But if I set it to max, blending will be better. But also we will not use a high scale because there will be some hollow points between the buttons like this. Now we can add two transformation 2D nodes to set this uh, tiled version to our final uh, geometry. So I will scale down the shape at the first transformation 2D node and set the blending mode as max for this shape. Still it's too much scaling. And let's position to the center of the style pet area that we want to place the buttons here. So I will decrease the scale a little bit more. Now I will place the shape to this area. You can see the problem here is we, our buttons don't have the uh, right angle for the background. Let's solve it by changing the uh, blending to add and lower the opacity to make it better. You can see that our buttons has the same angle with the background angle right now. We can increase it, but after a level, the buttons will reach to the top level of the white values. So they will be clamped on white values and will not show uh, the geometry that we want them to show. To make it better, we can either uh, push back all the background values of the previous shape by adding a levels node here and push down this white maximum white value so our buttons will have a better uh, unclamped result here you can see that top row is affected by the uh, white level clamping and if i push down the top white level of the previous shape it is corrected But we'll, this way, uh, we will lost the top high levels of the frame and other details. But this is expandable. And we can also change 
the positioning a little bit more to get a perfect alignment with the rest of the shape by checking both 3D view and the 2D view. Right. And also we can use another option to change the uh, look of the buttons to be placed at the angle of the shape. As you see, they are looking downwards on the general conical direction of them. To make it better, we can use a slope blur to create a different transition between top and bottom parts which will be better if we do it after the bevel node here. I am adding this here and also I will add a gradient linear node and then use it as slope. And also let's change the direction of the gradient because we want the sloping uh, higher at the bottom. As you see, let's connect it to the part here and also increase the intensity way much higher. Let's add a levels node to this gradient to block out the white areas at the top part because we want to affect only the bottom part of this button. So I will change the middle value of the gradient node. This is too intense. We will decrease the slope blur. Maybe we solved a little uh, problem here, but it's not the perfect result. Right, but sloping made the general shape look worse than this one. Maybe we can use another tool like directional warp to make the shape a better skewed to the top part. Let's change the direction to the 90 degrees and increase the warp to see how shape affected affected by it. And since we when we use the warp uh, the shape will be skewed to the top we can change the uh, y size of these buttons to overcome this problem All right and also we can use the position of this button a little bit to the top to get rid of this problem. Let me check if I change the rotation of this gradient. Didn't help so much. I'm trying to get the same angle here. And 
and also we need to move the shape after the directional warp because it's not centered anymore right because this time the center subtraction doesn't work okay and maybe we can change the top transition a little bit more by using a gradient okay for the subtraction I will use a blend node for this opacity map which we subtract the hemisphere from the tip of this button I will use a gradient linear node and multiply it with the tip mask but I will change the uh, direction of the gradient linear node and change the opacity a little bit to see how it affects the tip of this shape they are looking more like the computer buttons right now but we can add some additional touches by changing the roundness on the corners like this and also we can change the overall scale And the bevel distance to get more desired results at the end. All right, now it's better. Now we have our panel with buttons. So button placement is looking good. And also we can add a seam around these buttons to get a better uh, look on our final result. To do that we have a button formation here. And also the background panel here. We can combine both of them. To get a plating around this area or and uh, we can create an edge around the buttons then we can subtract it from the rest of the shape let's start with by adding an histogram select node and connect the buttons to do to this node so when creating position we can change the well value level value of the desired area around the buttons like this one let's subtract it from the resulted shape and see how it looks since we didn't uh, blur the results it's too crispy on the edges and also we can decrease the opacity of this subtraction to see where it does effects so change the position to get the nice coverage around the buttons which is better this way and now we have all the buttons are looking good after 
creating a seam around this area and also we can add some uh, old school looking uh, effect by adding a simple punched areas uh, around the buttons you can see what i mean if i add a blend node and then use an edge detect node edge detecting these edges let's invert it then i will add a blur hq grayscale node and also a curve node to create a sharp tip at the end now i will use this shape on our object and use add blend option with very low opacity to create a deformed plate around the buttons maybe we just skip the edge detect phase and also and use just the histogram select node all right our curve before our curves we may use an auto label node to make more visible shape here and let's decrease the intensity all right we are getting somewhere and from the histogram select node we may just change the settings for this particular effect and also we may use the max blending option instead of the add linear dodge for better looking shape here still I didn't like it so let's remove this create a simple copy of this histogram select node and add this to the results by just simple blurring the shape here like this you can see that the previous shape generates just the seam and the second one adds a frame around the button but the subtract previously subtracted seams here creates a leveled uh, frame around the buttons but it only affects the top part so let's check our blending to add because max uh, doesn't work here because white levels change changes before because of the angle of this plating now we can add a tiny frame around the buttons let's skip the subtraction here and just add this one which is looking better let's 
it's looking too sharp to press with fingers. I just decrease the blurness, increase the blurness a little bit, and I will decrease the opacity to get a better seam around the buttons. Now we have our buttons, uh, which looks okay. Let's add some old school lamps at this side, like uh, on call and waiting for call uh, LEDs here and finish this panel and move on to the next shape. For this shape, I will just add a simple blend for this angle that we have created here by making uh, this back panel. I'm going to find my gradient here, which corresponds to this angle. And I will add a blend here. Use the same mask that we have used before. And for this curve, I will just sell, uh, extract this color change here and create a seam under the uh, screen and the panel. So to do that, I will add an histogram select node, connect the gradient here for the position. I will decrease the range and position and this way it will create the very color change at the corner of this bending around the numeric panel. So I will use a subtract to make this seam here. But as you see, the seam is too, seam has too much thickness. So I will decrease the range a little bit more and I will position Change the positioning a little bit more to catch the uh, corner of this bending. So increasing the contrast, make the line thinner. But as you see, we have some undesired results here. We can just add another histogram select node to our blending mask because this shape has some transition here because we have blurred it before by the histogram select I will just take the top part of this shape I will set the position to the highest level and range to minimum to get rid of this tearing around this area also this is the best uh, good way to create a seam around this frame and the back panel also we may just add another histogram select here and from the top position we can just use a low range to create a seam between these two but it doesn't work like this let's add a third blend node and we will create a copy of this histogram select and then subtract it from overall objects but this histogram select not only needs to show the thinner frame around this shape. I will change the position a little bit. And you can see that 
we have a frame around the object. Let's check the white values here. Looking good, but the inner side has some problems because the very bottom part of this panel is totally black. To get rid of this, we will just add a levels node first and push all the values a little bit high at, to get a lighter black at the bottom. So our subtraction will work at this area too. And also for this subtraction, we will just use a blue ratio grayscale with a tiny intensity to get a smoother result on the subtraction. Let's see how it looks. when we increase the blueness intensity. Which is better this way. For the pushing the uh, black values a little bit high by this levels node at this part, we may need to uh, clear out the outside of this object because all of the height values uh, get to a, a greater value than zero here but we just want it to be only at this field so i will add another blend node and multiply it with a uniform color which is grayscale and totally black All right, with just the outside part of this frame should be used as a mask. To do that, let's use this. Let me check which one we will use. It's very hard to create, uh, find a nice mask for this shape because we already made too many blurry blurness let's just use the levels to push down the final shape and then add a blend node for the inside part to be added to this frame all right now we can invert it and use the outside part Blend it with the black on the final result. Now, this part is greater than the black and this part is totally black. And our final shape is not affected by it. Cool. Now let's rename the nodes that we have used by creating frames. The thing we have done here is the keypad panel. We can hold these nodes here. This is the outer shape. Let's rename it like this. Now we can 
make the alignment of the rest of the nodes panel for keys and those are just the keys and now we have the shape for our uh, key keypad panel let's move on by adding some additional details and then we go for the colors and the materials material details like roughness and metallic values uh, for this object now we can continue by adding some uh, lights to right panel to do that i will just use simple um, hemisphere shape So I'm creating key from the shape node. Scale it down. I will add a blend node here. Using max lighten option for the blend. And then I will add transformation to the node to place it to the correct position i will i added another transformation to the node for scaling let's scale down it and then position right you can see the positioning let's move it down a little bit all right you can see that the intensity of the extrusion of this LED light uh, is totally wrong. Uh, we will try to adjust it by the changing the opacity, blending opacity of the blend node. And also we will add a ring around it to create a better uh, look because these LED lights comes with a housing uh, that covers the whole of the body of the electronic device. So let's start with uh, creating an edge detect node. Uh, this will detect the shape of the hemisphere. Let's invert it. And also, I will add a blend node to blend this. Sorry. Blend node to blend this with the LED itself. I'll be using a max lighten option, but I will drop the opacity so the ring around the shape uh, will be in backwards according to the height order. I'm increasing the edge scale first. Let's maximize the opacity but add a level to the ring and then adjust the level of the ring itself so this way the led will be in front of the ring itself anyway we uh, we can adjust the uh, bumpiness of this uh, led light too let's say adjust the ring level first and also we need to change this blending mode as add linear dodge to make the 
angular correctness. Then we can adjust the levels individually by this node. Like this. And also this levels node will be used to adjust the LED light bumpiness. You can see the change on the curvature of the shape itself. So let's change the edge detect nodes scale. Sorry, I'm changing the right uh, wrong node. I'm increasing the edge width here to make a thicker ring around the LED. Roundness doesn't change anything, so it's not so important. And then I will change the overall scale of the LED here. All right. I will add a blue node. Or this ring and also there need to be a seam between the light and the ring to do that I will add an histogram scan node histogram select node sorry and try to catch this level of uh, white levels and subtract it from the shape to create a seam between the LED and the ring. I will adjust a very low range and adjust the position according to this as you can see when I jump over the levels of the ring it will create the edge around the LED light then I will use a blur for this edge and then subtract it from the ring to get clear result. You can see that I can lower the opacity of the subtraction to get a smoother result. And also I can lower the level of the LED light a little bit more. Which is better by this way. Now I can copy the whole uh, light to the bottom to duplicate it. I will add a transformation to the node and then add a blend node 
and blend these two with Make Slighten option by moving the second one slightly down to create the second copy. We will add some text over these lights to use them as an indicator on when the when any call is uh, made during the usage and also when the phone rings there will be some blinking on these leds all right now we can focus more on creating uh, color details of this part For the rest of the material channels, we will be following the same steps for the monitor part. We will start with base color and then rest of the channels like roughness and metallic channels. Let's start with defining the basic colors. We can use the ones from the other object. Let's co copy those. So we may use the same colors on this one. Let's pass it to a clear area. All right. We have outer and inner frames as usual. Uh, for the inner and outer frame blending, let's start with extracting a mask for the uh, inner frame. So I will use a levels node and push down the values of this height shape to a near zero. And then I will attach this to the blending of inner and outer frame color combination. Let's connect this result to the base color. We have no speaker shape this time. Maybe we can use this as uh, the button colors. So let's change it as the panel color. Actually, we can use this as panel color. So uh, we will follow some kind of uh, order by this way, because the, after the panel, there comes the buttons. Then we will have a screen. And also, we will have LED colors. So let's add two uniform colors for the LED lights. One. Let's make them together on this frame. And also, we will be having the LED frame colors. We have a screen, right panel, and we will also need a color for keypad back panel.
or uh, we will be using this for the buttons and also we don't need any screen black band let's remove it all right let's extract some uh, masks for this blendings so panel color will be the color inside the frame uh, we will be using uh, this one as the mask of the panel color let's define a strange color for now to make the effect also the outer frame uh, should be blended after the panel color so let's change the order of this two let me detach first this inner frame should be blended after the panel color and the frame first all right so the inner frame should be blended after the panel and next we will be using keypad back panel mask for the color blending and this mask should be this let's define a color for it as a temporary color we have a screen and this screen's mask should be this one let's add a levels node and push down its values and also we may need to subtract the frame from the screen because we have blended these two and there may be some intersection but for the color this isn't acceptable right now you can see the uh, blended colors are calculated through the base color output now now we can continue to add additional colors for the keys i added the blend node to the color blendings connected the buttons i will add a high level of white and then i will define uh, a mask for these keys we have this one and also we have this frame over the buttons so we we may use different colors for the button frames too let's copy this and add a name for them button frames and also let's blend this two we have already masks for this two these are the buttons we still need to push down its values by the way because it's a uh, height information all right
And for the bottom frames, let's define another color. And use a levels node again to push down the values. Let's use it on the bottom frame blending. Right. Let's change the frame color to see the result. Okay. All looking good. We will be adding uh, some color information for these buttons. First, uh, three. Yeah, uh, these three columns and four rows will be the uh, numeric path, and those ones will be the special keys for some special actions. We have time to think about them. And let's continue with the LED lights and LED frames. You may think that why we are using base color for the LED lights instead of using an emissive channel, adding an emissive channel here. Uh, because these lights may not be blinking, so when they are not lit, they should be having some uh, tint over them, like plastic look, when they turn down. So let's add a note here to prevent any misconfusion because these are the colors that turned off state of these LEDs. I will blend them first in uh, between each other and then blend the result with the rest of the base color result. So we will be having two colors like red and yellow by the masks of this LED lights which should be those but you can see that we already defined the colors uh, defined the height maps together so uh, it will be hard to extract individual levels through these uh, shapes. So to do that, I will use an histogram select node for this shape. Let's see if it's it will be sufficient to extract any color from it. I will use an auto levels to make those colors recognizable and then with a low range I will adjust the shape with high contrast until I get a clear look of the mask which I desire. This will be the mask of the rings and also I will adjust it to have another mask for the LED lights. And this is better for the lights. Also we need we will need to uh, change the we need to split the, these two to create two different colors. I will add a blend node and place a shape to block one of the colors. Let's make it subtract and then I will move this shape over it to block one of the 
shapes and also I will copy it copy this one too and make the same action for the bottom light so we have two LEDs individually and one ring mask for two of them let's connect the mask first I will add another blend oh sorry we will be blending these two the LED frames through the color blending also we can uh, we use uh, this one as a background but we can add a blend node and define this as a foreground texture without any background we end up with getting an alpha multiplied texture so it will be easy to use with the final blending of this space colors. So when I uh, blend this with no background, I will have a transparent background with red light. And then I will continue to use masks, blend these two LED lights with transparent background too and also getting the rings this time I will only have the colors around the LED lights now I can blend this without any mask to get the final color but you can see that some bleeding over the shapes are not correct so I will have to adjust the histogram select levels that I made to get perfect positioning for these lights it seems as the colors of the ring looks wrong here but maybe it's better to blend the LEDs or the ring uh, will be better but first we need to uh, correct this edge bleeding for the ring mask I need to create a mask without the background And also we may add some blur to the shape in a very low intensity to smooth it a little bit. We are in very low resolution by the way. Alright, now it looks better. Now we can change the order of this to blending. To do this, I will just use a blend, blend node to blend these together after the rings are created with the mask of the rings and I will put the colors over the rings 
So still our LED mask doesn't look good. So let's adjust the histogram select node of the LED lights too. It's really hard to extract and clean results from this color distribution because the colors are very close to each other. So this result is not looking so exact acceptable. We may need to copy the transformation 2D nodes for the blending of just the LED lights. I mean these two transformation 2D nodes, blending of them and this one which makes our positioning for the LED lights. Now I connect this and I add a levels. Maybe we even we can copy the levels node and push down the values at the first place to get just the LED lights here. Now we can use this result as a blending of this LED lights to create a mask of them. All right. Now we have colors for the LEDs, but this should be the turned off state of these LEDs. We need to drop down the values of these lights to get a very dark color on the plastic. So in the next chapter, we will go on by defining the roughness values and the maps of this piece. See you.